my husband, who um, was essentially the love of my life, uh, in, uh, it, he um, had asked me to marry him on the fourth date, and I said yes, and which is always kind of exciting for people to hear about, especially if you are terminally single at 42. Um, <laughs> so so um, he asked me to marry him on the fourth date, and I said yes, and then we got married, and then we had he was my soulmate. So many people now want to meet their soulmate, their soulmate, their soulmate. But when you meet your soulmate, you're meeting someone that you have business with, you have connections with. And we had stuff to work out. And we, would, we had um, a relationship that was very intense. About six o'clock in the morning, I heard, I mean, it was like somebody came into bed and punched me, just punched me and said, go outside, go outside. And I went outside and I looked out to the east and, and there was the most beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunrise. And I heard, you will go on, you will go on. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to go on, thanks very much. And I, at that point, I understood why widows crawl on their, um, on their husbands, you know, priors in, in India. I was able to heal, and I've been able to help other people heal because the gods more or less pushed me in the situa into a direction of a healer and apparently in all my lives I have been, in most of my lives, I have been a healer. I have a, a client who is a trial lawyer. He is a medical malpractice lawyer and he came to me because he was having, he, was, he thought he was going to be fired because he could not get himself to do what he wanted to do. Nothing, I mean, it was like he was driving everybody crazy as everybody in the office was saying, you're not gonna have the heart attack, you're giving us a heart attack because he was, he could not meet his deadlines and he was the point man, he did all the depositions, he did the interviewing of witnesses, of not witnesses, of um, experts. So he came to me and I worked with him and I got him, I did a regression. Okay, why, what is stopping you? Why, what is stopping you? Why can't you cooperate? So he wanted to know why, why was he always in these situations where he was traumatized by his bosses? And he thinks of himself as a um, a compassionate samurai. He is a medical malpractice um, attorney and he really takes on these cases where he's David against Goliath and he wins and he's very proud of what he does. Um, so he, um, so we go back in time and he sees himself as an African slave in the Middle East someplace and he's, he's um, He's got his hands shackled and he's being bought. And he's very afraid, he's very young, he doesn't know what he's going to be able to do. And they take him home to the place, the person who was going to be his master. The person takes his loincloth, strips it off, and turns him around and sodomizes him. And he is going to be this owner's babe. And it's, he, it, it's humiliating, it's terrible. And he's just, you know, you can always float above. You do not have to be here in that, in that space. So, so he goes and um, he goes back to slave quarters and he's now disrespected in slave quarters because he's the master's babe and he's a guy. And, um, but he lives in a long life. I was thinking that he was going to die. I, you know, I kept going, let's, shoot. he lived a very long life. And, um, and at the end of that life, as 
at, when you do a past life regression, you're always, you can always see the, what the soul needed to learn. What did the soul need to learn? And I asked him that, and, and it was, he just clear as a bell, he said that freedom is a state of mind and that no one can enslave you unless you allow it. My mother had serious problems with me and I never understood why she couldn't stand me. I was a nice child from my point of view. I was very uppity, I guess. I'd just been a, a very rich Jewish doctor and I, here I was with all these goyim, you know? I'd like, what was I doing here? And I just, I didn't quite fit in. I didn't, I never fit in. And at three, as I said, I knew I was different. I knew I was sort of weird. And I knew, and I made up the, the fairy tale that I was a Chinese princess who had been kidnapped by gypsies. So that I then put in this, and put in this family as a test. But when I was with Brian doing past life regressions, I saw myself as, and I have many lives, as medicine men and priests and things like that. I was a priest. I was a Toltec priest or an Incan priest or some sort of damn priest where I see that there's, it's, I see the light, the, there, everybody's torches all around and we have just won a battle. Okay, we've just won a battle. It's my job as head priest to ceremonially decapitate the, um, the opposing king. Okay. And I'm seeing this, I'm doing this with Brian. Yes, you got it. And, <laughs> my, and they pull this face up, and I go, Foo! and I go, oh my God, it's my mother. <laughs> and and literally, when my mother, you should see the pictures of me and my mother. I mean, my mother is, there's no pictures of me and my mother when you were, it's, just, it's always like a lot. to um, forgive everybody. I mean, one of the things that I, I, I do most is to get clients to forgive everybody. <laughs> forgive them now. Don't hold any grudges. I mean, when you get cut off in traffic, Forgive them immediately. You can, you know, when you are frustrated with people ahead of you, go into fascination. Like the, the motorcycle just cuts you off and it scares you to death. And you go, ah, fascination. Oh, I wonder how long he'll be in that body. <laughs> Another great part of <laughs> hypnosis and getting CDs and listening to them on a regular basis that really makes it's modern life a lot more pleasant. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, stress reduction. Yeah.